So let's check out my garden. I'm actually going to uh, do a little bit of cooking with some of the stuff that I had in my garden this year. I guess it's cooking. But uh, the boys and I, we went out saltwater fishing a few weeks ago. And I caught some flounder, some trout, a few redfish. And uh, let's look at the garden. Yeah, let's just look at the garden first. Let's look at it. These are my tomatoes right here. I got a few tomato plants. I think I planted like six tomato plants. And dude, they really check them out. I don't even know if I can get them all in the frame. I got a lot of fruit coming in too, but the tomato plants probably did the best out of all the things that uh, that I planted this year. I planted a bunch of different things, tomatoes. Uh, over here, I've got some peppers. I don't know what happened to my peppers or what kind of peppers these are. I, I know some of them are bell peppers. I should have did a better job of labeling what I uh, planted. Yes, sir. It's dead? Okay, we'll charge it. I should have did a little bit better job of labeling what I planted, but this is some type of pepper right here. All of these in this in this particular bed is peppers. Everything that I got here is peppers. Check out my banana peppers. Come on, baby. They really putting out the juice. Um, this is my bell peppers. I had some weird stuff going on with my bell peppers. This is, maybe they're just not ready yet, but this is about as big as they're getting. Probably just not enough rain. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will tell me. But you see, I got one or two here. These are doing good. Yeah, th those, these bell peppers, look, that's, that's a nice one. Not as big as the one you see in the store, but it's still a really nice pepper. And of course, I got jalapenos. Jalapenos are doing really good. Pretty big jalapeno peppers. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I did plant quite a few things that did not do really good at all. This stuff didn't do well. I'm going to tell you what I learned about this, and you guys can use it. This is my cucumbers. I got a little bit of fruit coming in back in there. You can see the plants don't look that healthy, and I, I know exactly why. So there was something that I, re that I learned that, uh, that I can't wait to implement, even this fall. I'm going to do a garden again this fall. When I tried to use artificial soil, potting soil, those plants didn't do well. You notice those plants look really pale. The fruit is not as plentiful. And the fruit is just, it's not as good as the plants in these planters right here. So next year, all my entire garden, even if it's in a container, all on organic red dirt. The red dirt stuff produced way more fruit. My plants look healthier. I didn't have nearly as many disease and mildew on the plants that I had in just regular old dirt. Lesson learned. The reason that we a lot of times we'll use the potting soil over like uh, over just the dirt that you already got in your yard is because you think it's going to be easier to work and use because it's softer and more pliable. But the trade-off is it just doesn't hold the nutrients nearly as well. So don't do that. Just plant your garden and your tomatoes in the good old red dirt if you live in the south or wherever you live, just right in the dirt. It seems to work a lot better. I don't have any fruit on my watermelon just yet. You like watermelon, Brooks? No, leave it there. It's not ready. Leave it there. Don't open cook it yet. This is my squash plant. It, did, it was like the first to give me some fruit this year, though. But it also got some mildew on the leaves earlier this year. You can see uh, this is not really it, but it got some mildew and died off and actually sprouted again. Just so you know, anywhere you have a flower, the flower comes first and then the fruit. That's going to be a squash. I use a squash for uh, squash casserole. That's really all I eat with squash. The rest of it's just, I don't, eat, I don't really like squash that well, but squash casserole, we'll have to do a video about that. It's just really good. So what I'm gonna make with the vegetables from my garden, but a pico to go with some of the fish that we catch when we go to the coast. Pretty simple. All you need is a couple tomatoes, a lime, a red onion, and a jalapeno. Now, of course, I didn't grow the onion out of my garden. All you're gonna do is uh, dice these guys up. I either like to start with my tomato, dice that up really good. You see, my tomatoes are kind of small, and uh, so I got two of them for this little bit of portion, not that much. Then I'll take my onion. I'm using about uh, one third of an onion, dicing that guy up too, and I'm gonna put that in my bowl as well. Now I'm using purple onion. You can use a sweet onion, a white onion, whatever you guys like to call it, but I like the purple onion mainly because I think the color is kind of cool. I like a little bit of heat, so I'll take one of my jalapenos 
and I'm actually taking the seeds out so it's not quite as hot as it normally would be if I use it just a normal jalapeno. I just use half of one. Half one is plenty, trust me. Don't go too heavy on the jalapenos. Put that in your bowl as well. Stir that up really good. And then last, you'll need a little bit of cilantro. So with the cilantro, I like to take the leaves off the stems because I, I don't know what it is about, I don't know, just I like to take the stem, the leaves off the stems. You can do it whatever way you like to do it. Then I take a pair of kitchen shears and just cut it all up and put that in my pico as well. Keep in mind, you can dice this up really thick or you can dice it up really fine. Whatever, however thick you dice it up is how thick your pico is gonna be. Last part that you need is a lime. Now the lime you're gonna squeeze, for this amount, I just like to use about a half of a lime. You don't need the whole thing. Squeeze the half a lime in there, stir that up really good. And then after you finish that part, add just a little bit of salt, just salt the taste. It just makes the flavor pop. Put it in the refrigerator and look at that. It tastes pretty good, I think. Yeah, that works for me. Now let's get to frying the fish. This is how I like to fry my fish. I don't go with just straight up cornmeal. I actually like to use cornbread mix as well. That's Jiffy Mix. It has a little bit sweeter taste. I like to base my fish in a little bit of egg wash just so it makes the batter stick to the fish a little bit better. You know, you could put it in a bag and shake it up, but I like to just put it on a cutting board and put it all there. Looks like my grease is hot enough. So just put your fish in your grease. I'm just using regular old vegetable oil and I like to start with the face of the fish down first, skin up. I'll let that set in the grease for about four minutes and then I'll take it out, put it on my plate. Now I like to make a flounder sandwich. This is actually flounder that I'm frying right here. So I'm gonna make a flounder sandwich. For me, I like fried toast with my sandwiches. So I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in this pan and just fry up a little bit of toast to go with my sandwich. Nothing like some fresh guacamole for me, so I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh guacamole, and then we're gonna take our pico de gallo that we made and put that on our plate. This is just a really good, simple lunch meal every day that's easy to make. Now it's time to try it out. Take my fresh guacamole and I like to spread that on my toast, my butter, butter fried toast. And I take my flounder, I put that on my toast as well. Take my pico, it gives me a good flavor and it's kind of hot, it's a little spicy too. You can put cheese if you want to, but I'm trying to eat less cheese because I'm trying to eat less cheese. Simple as that. I always keep a little extra guacamole. I put it on my sandwich like ketchup. And that Jiffy mix, mix in with your cornmeal. The cornbread mix, mix in with your cornmeal. Gives your fish just like this little sweet taste to it. It just, it does it for me. This is pretty cool to do. If you wanna find out how to do more backyard projects like me, make sure you check out xmark.com forward slash backyard. You find a lot of other content creators just like me.